Next, I'll invite Nareesh sir for uh, his management of uh, intraocular foreign bodies. Uh, thank you, Dr. Piyush, for the invitation. And uh, good morning, the esteemed guests. Okay, we are happy to have two guests here. Thanks for coming in spite of the busy schedule. So I think I have got 10 minutes. I'll try to run through, yeah. So there'll be certain uh, repetition, just don't mind, because that is basically to re-emphasize. So we'll be discussing or just uh, sharing our experience of post-segment trauma, basically how to localize the foreign body and how to retrieve it. I'll not be showing many videos because retrieval is not that difficult, but uh, the work, yeah, ready? Yeah. So open globe injury is not only the important cause of uh, uh, the blindness, and the morbidity, it is disfiguring also. And uh, most importantly, it has got a lot of uh, medical legal implication which has to be taken into account when we are dealing with the open globe injury. So in any case uh, of open globe injury, we have got three windows. The first acute window within 24 hours. The second one is one, to one day to one month. And the third window is after that. Yes. So usually in acute window, the basic purpose is to maintain the integrity to prevent the infection. And in second two windows, usually they come with the uh, sequelae. Usually in those two windows, better you send the case to VR surgeons. And uh, before we start the ex ocular examination, see always not uh, eye injuries, uh, what you call uh, isolated. Sometimes it can be a part of a road traffic accident or a blast injury. So do all these things meticulously. Look for the systemic stability because life is more important than the eyes and then you go for the rest of the things. And usually any case of open globe injury, we usually take under open, I mean, general anesthesia, irrespective of the age, because it is very difficult to assess the time, so never uh, go for local anesthesia in these cases. And uh, when you come across the injury, these are the questions to be raised, because this will uh, give a lot of a clue for what. So this uh, was already told by, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, Piyush, we thought this could be a closed globe injury, but when you examine, so this is what we found, there was a foreign body inside, and localizing the foreign body very precisely is very important to retrieve. Okay, this I will just, uh, but you have to prognosticate before you take the case, because uh, in our practice, we always come across, after explaining all the poor prognosis, the patient certain will ask, where or no, it means, is, is there anything more, actually, or nothing else is there. So Im imaging is very important, the first most important imaging is, I'll just skip that, yeah. First Im important imaging is the x-rays. So should we do prophylactic uh, antibiotics? Yes, it has got a role. Uh, maybe controversial, but still we give. But if the patient comes with no PL, don't say no to the surgery, because no PL is not a contraindication for surgery in case of uh, what you call the open globe injury, because many people have uh, got good vision after surgeries, OK? So intravital antibiotic, yes, at the end of every procedure, we have to give vancocept and uh, uh, sometimes voriconazole, depending upon the thing. So what are the indications, usually in uh, open globe injury, whenever there is a foreign body? Before taking the case, you just go for a good counseling, especially in groups, so that you involve every other member of the family, and you have to tell about the need for the multiple surgery, and we have to be very brutal and frank about the prognosis. And the chances of thysis has to be explained, and one more thing is the sympathetic ophthalmia of the fellow eye. So these are all there in the book, we can just uh, skip actually, but localizing the foreign body is very important. So how to localize? The history is also important. Actually, this patient came with uh, multiple pins actually. Actually, this was a self-inflicted injury. We could see only three, but on x-ray, so this was the previous x-ray three months ago when before he came to us. When he came to us, we saw more than 60, 70 pins actually. And this was a reconstructed picture of the, what do you call the 3D picture of his uh, CT, showing multiple pins. This was because of the depression he was uh, putting the needle inside his eye. So we could not uh, do much in this patient, okay? So how to localize? The best way is to do indirect ophthalmoscopy before the media becomes hazy, but X-ray is always important. PA view is the one which is recommended because in AP view, we'll have a lot of bony shadow, and for medical legal purpose, you do this. In case if you don't have any CT scan, you can go for a limbal ring. In this, you can construct the artificial eye so that you can uh, find whether it's intraocular or extraocular. This is one such case. So we have done the limbal ring. Actually, if you see, 
it is in the lateral picture, it is not there in the ring, but the foreign body was much behind. When CT was done, it was in the frontal lobe of the brain actually. So, nothing could be done. The advantage of ultrasound is you can find the collateral damage like vitreous hemorrhage or uh, any retinal tear or any retinal detachment, choroidal detachment and the lens capsule status. But do it gently, do not press so that the contents might come out if you are uh, uh, very this thing actually. Now, why the localization is important is this case we thought it is just a vitreous foreign body in the vitreous after doing the ultrasound. Sometimes it is deceiving. After doing a vitrectomy, there was exit wound, but uh, we have been searching for the foreign body, nothing could be seen. So, the best way is you do a fluid air exchange. Sometimes, in case of chronic foreign body, you can find the foreign body in the fast plan area so that it is identifying that is easy. But in this, uh, the entire retina was searched, nothing could be found. So, the localization was bad in this case, but somehow I was lucky, like we just, just went and bridled. And with the magnet, when I was uh, fishing out through the sclera, it was on the sclera, it has uh, penetrated through the sclera and it has come out. So, this is a rare earth magnet which I uh, will be showing actually, which uh, can pick any of the metallic foreign body, not only the iron, it can pick even the nickel and other, the other uh, uh, what do you call the foreign bodies. It has got a, a changeable tip right from, okay. So, the right hand, the one is the magnet actually. So, I was fishing out, I could feel that the foreign body came out, okay. So, sometimes if you do not precisely localize, we will end up in all this problem. And the other thing is a CT scan. It is very useful in uh, localizing even the, if the foreign body is very, very small. But when you are doing MRI, uh, be careful uh, to rule out a, a metallic foreign body because it might move inside the eye and will lead to collateral damage when you are doing the MRI. And ERG is very useful in case of a chronic foreign bodies. Right? If the ERG is uh, flat, still you do an EOG, only in the presence of flat ERG and a flat EOG, retrieving the foreign body is of no use. But if the flat ERG is flat, but if the EOG is of normal, still go ahead, the patient will get a good vision. Okay? So, basically the management ob objective as I have already discussed is to establish the integrity, prevent the infection, then remove the foreign body, maintain the clear media, manage and finally ROP. And the most important is preventing the sympathetic ophthalmia. And all reactive foreign body, whether it is iron or nickel, I mean sorry, copper, everything should be removed. But if it is a glass foreign body or rock piece, usually I tend to leave it because they are inert. And more important because it is irregular, it is difficult to retrieve if it is large, if you do not have the proper armamentarium. There are various routes, but now we do. So, this is uh, uh, the basic thing uh, which I have taken from the dictionary. So, without a proper armamentarium, never enter the eye in case of foreign body. Okay? So, these are the various foreign body which can be retrieved by various uh, instruments. Not everything can be done by the same instrument. So, you should have every other armamentarium when you are going inside. So, I think uh, the videos, okay. So, for example, this is a case of history of injury with the thorn. When you inside after doing the vitrectomy, Yeah, you can find the thorn protruding inside the eye. So, in these cases, you cannot retrieve this foreign body through the sclera. So, uh, you have to sacrifice the lens and it has to be removed trans uh, sclerally through the what you call uh, the corner, uh, corner scleral wound. So, usually we make a second opening to send the fo forceps inside. Yeah, we pull the what you call the thorn and it is retrieved through the pupil trans. I mean, uh, through the pupillary path. It cannot be re removed through the, uh, what do you call the scleral pathway, but you have to remove the rest of the remnants. And uh, this is a case, we get all funny foreign bodies. This is a case, again, a large foreign body is inserted over the optic disc like a tower, actually, you can find out. Again, this cannot be retrieved through the uh, sclera. So, you have to sacrifice the lens, we have no other option, but with uh, all these SFIL techniques, sacrificing the lens is not that traumatic nowadays. So, you just go inside, you can find with the right instrument, yeah, this is the foreign body, which was there on the disc, but uh, there was no visual prognosis, at least the complication due to metallosis can be prevented. So, this is a very large foreign body over the disc. Again, in these cases, transcleral is not advisable or not possible also. So, you just go for what you call the trans uh, pupillary delivery of the foreign body. Okay. 
So as I have uh, told, in case of chronic foreign bodies, the patient will come with metallosis. In this case, I couldn't uh, localize the foreign body in spite of the CT showing. So you go for a fluid exchange because that gives a panoramic view. So when we are doing the depression, I could see the foreign body in the inferior pass plana area. Usually, uh, MVR is used to tease the foreign body from the sclera. And yes, you can see the foreign body, it is teased. And as I have told, sometimes it's very difficult to localize. So you go for the third port. People do so many ways, actually. You can uh, go through the same port also. Then you can go for the separate port for the vitrectomy cutter. But here we go for a separate port. And using the, after localizing, yeah, yeah. Using the forceps, you can just go and retrieve it, yes. So I'll just conclude in a minute. So these are the uh, uh, rare earth magnet, the forceps, and the most important thing is the most powerful electromagnet, which is there working as yet for more than 40, 45 years. It's quite uh, uh, useful in retrieving the foreign body, especially from the sclera when it is struck, actually. So these cases I'll just remove. So basically the prognosis depends on the site of the foreign body and the damage to the macula. If everything is fine, good. And irrespective of the foreign body, if it is metallic and uh, if it can cause metallosis, you have to remove it. Non-magnetic foreign body usually entails a very bad prognosis because retrieving that is very difficult. And we don't have the proper uh, forceps also to remove that. We use Bapai's forceps, okay? So, and uh, usually if there is uh, any previous uh, operations, it makes the prognosis even worse. Lens damage also worsens the prognosis due to poor visibility and lens-induced complication. But anyhow, preventing the sympathetic ophthalmia is very, very important. And with that, I would like to conclude this. Thank you very much.